Well, for more on the Davos agenda and the global economy, let's bring in William Lee, Chief Economist at the Milken Institute. Always good to have you on. Thank you. So let's start with your reaction to that more upbeat, upward revision to the global growth that was provided by the IMF. I think the IMF is, I, it feels like going home to me because I used to work on the World Economic Outlook when I was at the IMF. And what they tend to do is to follow a consensus. And Guido is very right to point out the disparity within uh, country, among countries and within countries of the growth patterns. There are some sectors of the economy, like here in the United States, that are doing very well. Uh, and China, for example, is doing very well with the industrial front. Uh, but the service sector, which is enormously large in most of the advanced economies, that's not doing so well, especially in the hospitality, travel, and entertainment sectors. And that's where we find difficulties and policy challenges of having to address the shortfalls in these sectors as high unemployment rates persist uh, and, and incomes are, are dissipating. And the, the challenge is to support these economies in a way that doesn't overstimulate the sectors that are already overheating. So then as we look at balancing out the needs of some of these different sectors, talk about the importance of more stimulus as well as vaccine rollouts in the recovery and what that does for expectations. Yeah, the vaccine has really provided a shot in the arm in terms of raising the, the level of optimism. And, and most of these outlooks have been uh, uh, upgraded because of the prospect of having the vaccines come out. But we've already seen in the UK, uh, in Europe, as well as here in the United States, how difficult it is to manage the logistics behind getting the shots in the arms. And I think the, the problem going forward is going to be not so much to produce the vaccines, but to distribute them in a way that effectively gets the population vaccinated so that we can go back to life as it was before COVID. And that's going to be a very difficult thing. And, and every time we hear something new, the news has always been a downbeat, that there's been a logistical uh, uh, a problem as opposed to a logistical highlight that made things easier. So I think going forward, you'll see a lot of these forecasts being revised downward because logistical problems are going to be much more difficult than anticipated. Now, you tapped on a few countries, so let's get a roundup of some of these regional recoveries. What are your expectations and concerns when it comes to the U.S., the EU, Latin America, and the African continent? Well, let's start with the African continents because those are the countries that are most hard hit and probably the least reachable right now with vaccines because of the, the, the pure logistics of having the, the, high, the, 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 the high technology for keeping the vaccines cold and distributing them within a rural area of the sort that we find within the African continent. So the, the prospects of that of those countries recovering are very low. In the US and, and EU, what we find are the difficulties in these sectoral disparities, as I mentioned before. Uh, and, and I think what we're finding is that to get the sectors back on in, in gear, we're gonna have to be able to get the vaccines into the arms much more effectively. Now, looking at China, they have the opposite problem. Uh, they, they took a, a very draconian means to try to dampen the impact of uh, COVID on the population so that now there's very little COVID, but China now has the problem of having enough domestic demand to support growth without the rest of the world. And, and the dual circulation strategy put in place is one way to try to address that by switching demand from going abroad and traveling abroad to boosting consumption at home. So then as you mentioned, sort of the rest of the world essentially playing catch up as China sort of moving ahead and turning the corner and looking towards more growth. What about China's growth outlook? What are the main drivers going to be? The main driver going forward is going to have to be domestic demand. And, and in fact, that is part of the uh, uh, President Xi's uh, policy speeches. Although in Davos, he's talked a lot about multilateralism and a need for China to be engaged in the rest of the world. His, his policies, actual policies on the ground are one of switching to a much more domestic focused development, domestic focused innovations, domestic focused technological changes that would try to leapfrog China into the forefront of the um, cutting edge of uh, artificial intelligence, high tech, and, and bio pharmacological products. And I think that's one problem that's going to have China integrating back to the rest of the world as the world starts to develop uh, and come back online again. China, I hope, will not develop standards that are not compatible with those of the rest of the world so that it would have difficulties plugging into the rest of the world. And we did see the president, she spoke uh, Monday at the, Davos, about, at the Davos agenda for the first time since 2017. How has President Xi's message on global cooperation and really avoiding some of these trade, tech and cold wars when, they, when there are disagreements between countries, how is that being received around the world? 
Uh, it's being received, I think, by leaders very well because everyone else has repeated the same word, which is multilateralism. And I, I'd like to remind our audience that multilateralism means you talk to a lot of people, but how do you effectively talk to a lot of people and get action? And I think that's the, the difficulty that's going to be confronted. When we look at multilateral trade rounds, for example, the Doha round, it took 14 years of discussion, and at the end of the discussion, what happened? It broke down. The, the, the trade, multilateral trade rounds before that took easily about 10 years. Uh, what, what President Xi, I think, and has done actually also is to have a second backup plan, which is to have a regional multilateralism, which means uh, having trade alliances with uh, Southeast Asia, and that has proven to be much more effective, like, as we see from that last round of trade talks. All right, thank you. Always good to have you on. William Lee there, Chief Economist at the Milken Institute. Thanks for having me.